Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jessica Flynn and I am the owner and maker of Flynn Sisters Boutique. And today we are gonna be doing an agate geode slice tutorial. Um, this is the photo that I used for inspiration on this cup. I know there's a lot of great tutorials on this technique out there and um, they're all wonderful. This is my first time uh, doing a cup like this. So I hope that this tutorial works out and I hope you guys like it. Uh, let me know what you guys thought in the comments. Also, we are getting super close to 20,000 subscribers on this channel. So, if you so I actually filmed this ahead of time and we already hit 20,000 subscribers. Thank you all so, so much. Thank you for subscribing to our channel. Enjoy the rest of the video. If you're watching this video and you like what you see, make sure you hit subscribe, hit that bell button so you don't miss a new tutorial. We do upload every Wednesday and Saturday. Also, you're gonna find links and discount codes to almost all of the products that you see being used in this video. So be sure to check those out in the description box. All right, so I think that's enough chit chat for me. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so we're gonna start out with a prepped and sanded cup that I have spray painted with a white uh, spray primer spray paint. And I'm just using a pencil to draw out my lines for the geode slice. Now, you really wanna kind of give this some thought because I want to put a decal for the name along the back and I want that decal to kind of go diagonal across the back. So I want my geode to be slightly larger and cover almost all of the cup. Not the whole cup, maybe like a little less than half or a little more than half. So it took me a long time to draw this out and that's why I used a pencil. Um, and so I found it helpful to draw like the boundary lines of like the largest points of my geo design first and then kind of filled in the lines on the inside. And you're going to want to obviously draw as many layers as you'll have glitter colors. Next, I mixed up my glue with some paint and I'm just using craft acrylic paint from Arteza. I'll have a link below on where you can find these paints. And I'm just using the paint to add in with the Mod Podge to match the colors of glitter that I'm using. Totally optional, you don't have to do this. I just figured this would help me get better coverage with my glitter. And this paint set's really nice because it comes with like a huge assortment of colors. And these colors are really nice, really pigmented. And I'm not really paying attention to the ratio of paint versus glue, but you almost want to have this be like a 50-50 ratio of paint to glue. And for this design, I'm just using regular old Mod Podge, nothing special. So here's the colors that we're going to be using for our geo design. I will have all of these colors listed in the description box below along with a link on where you can find these colors and an exclusive discount code. All right, next I'm just going to use a little paintbrush here and I'm going to paint on my colors um, to apply the glitter. So I'm just going to paint one small section at a time. And I want to start with my darkest colors first. So since I'm doing the center color and this like dark kind of gold situation, I'm going to start with the center and then kind of work my way out from there. All right. And you kind of want to work quickly uh, because the Mod Podge is going to dry really quick, especially if you're in a warmer environment. So if you can try and do this where it's a little cooler. Um, I'm just starting with this color um, Scuttle um, from Peachy Olive Glitters. This is what we're going to have for the center. And you're just going to sprinkle on a whole bunch. You really kind of want to pile it on for this um, just because it's hard to get 
good coverage with the Mod Podge. And then um, I'm gonna tap off the excess and also brush off the excess with a clean brush. So next I'm gonna go on to the center layer, or not the center, the outside layer, <laughs> uh, because we're also gonna be using a pretty dark color on this outside uh, ring as well. All right, so really we're just repeating this process for each color throughout the whole design. Uh, and when I get to this chunkier glitter, this is Flynn from PTL with Glitters. I'm gonna also use Figgy on top of it, which is pretty much the same color, it's just a smaller cut, just so I can get better coverage through that chunkier glitter. All right, so for this center part, I'm just gonna come back in with a little bit of the darker tinted glue, and I'm just gonna layer some spots with this hollow glitter. Um, again, another peachy olive glitter color, and this is just gonna add some kind of like depth and dimension to this center piece, which typically with these agate geode slices, they have you know a lot of the detail and like kind of spiky points in the center, I guess you would say. So I thought layering up some different colors would look cool on this. All right, so after we've got all the colored layers on, I'm gonna let that dry for a little bit and tap off the excess really well. And then I'm gonna come in with non-tinted Mod Podge and we're just gonna brush it on really smoothly. And then I'm gonna sprinkle on this Bliss also peachy olive glitters uh, and bliss is a really pretty white that has a high flash silver to it that i thought was it complemented these darker purple colors perfectly 
You'll want to make sure that you really get your Mod Podge on this large section smooth. So I like to get a good amount on there and then I'll take my brush and then lightly brush over the surface to get it nice and smooth because any of those lines that you see in the glue now, you'll see those lines through the glitter later. So make sure you take your time on this part. Okay, and then when we add the glitter, we're just going to really let it rip. All those other colored sections should be fully dry, so I'm not really worried about any of the white getting stuck in those parts. Okay, so after all the glitter has had a chance to dry, I'm just gonna go in and add some fun little details. Um, we're gonna outline these little kind of like crystallized sections later on when we do the outlines with the acrylic markers. But what I'm doing here is I'm just adding a little bit of Mod Podge and some chunky opal glitter. This glitter color is called Quinn from PG Olive Glitters. And I'm just applying a small amount of glue along one of the lines between the colored sections. And I'm just pressing that glitter down so I get just one, you know, single flat layer of glitter. And I'm just kind of placing these little clusters randomly throughout the design, okay? And um, you're going to want to let this whole thing dry for a really good amount of time. I think I let mine dry for at least 10 hours or overnight. And then I went and spray sealed it twice with Rust-Oleum 2 times clear gloss spray paint. All right, so next we're just gonna epoxy this how I normally would. Uh, I'm gonna start with the white section and epoxy the white section first so I don't drag any of the colored glitter into the white sections. I did seal this pretty well, so there's not, it's not really likely that I would spread any of the glitter, but just in case. For this uh, 16 ounce wine glass, I used 30 milliliters of epoxy on the first layer and we're just spreading it on like I normally would uh, and then I'm going to let this cure for four to six hours and then I'm going to go right into a second coat. After that second coat dries I'm going to sand it. You'll want to wait at least eight to ten hours to start sanding um, and then the fun part, which I think brings this whole look together, I'm using the Arteza acrylic markers and I'm just creating some outlines around those clusters that I made. And I'm also drawing outlines between each of the colored sections. I'm just using the black one to do this. And it helps if you have a cup of coffee for this because you kind of want a shaky hand, or at least I do. I mean, you can have it any way you want. If you want smooth lines between those layers, if you want jagged lines, and this is really going to help pull the whole look together. So I know it looks crazy right now because we just sanded it, uh, but I just really love the way the outlines really pulled this together. Because I'll be honest with you, I wasn't really happy with how this one turned out, but I think after I got the outlines on it, I really liked it so much more. All right, so after I got all the lines on there, um, you could really epoxy this right away. That paint dries really quickly and you don't have to seal it. I am gonna put a decal on the back for the name. The font that I used on this is called Bellissima, I wanna say. I can't remember, but I will have it listed down in the description box below. 
Uh, and I will also have the vinyl color that I used in this video linked down below as well. And for this design, I really just wanted to um, do something simple and elegant along the back. And I'm kind of going to apply it at a bit of an angle. Uh, once we get the decal on there, uh, this was ready to epoxy right away. You could seal that metallic vinyl if you wanted to. Um, this name was so small and the lines were so delicate, I just didn't really think I needed to. So I just went straight into epoxy and did two more layers for final coats and we were totally done. So that's it for this tutorial. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Um, if I could do this over again, I probably would have done like two layers of glitter instead of one layer for those colors because I felt like I probably could have gotten a little better coverage. But all in all, I'm pretty happy with how this one turned out since it was my first one. <laughs> so I hope you guys have fun with this. There's so many different color combinations that you could do, so many different designs. Um, I just think these are so fun and I always love to see these um you know in all the different groups and stuff so have fun with it can't wait to see what you guys come up with and thanks for watching we'll see you soon If you love this video, you could check out our last video here. Also, be sure to find us on Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, and of course, subscribe for all our new videos that come out every Wednesday and Saturday. Thanks so much for watching. See you soon.